So, um, in my talk, I will talk about trusted timestamping. What is trusted timestamping? Trusted timestamping allows you to prove that you had certain knowledge at a certain point in time or that you had access to a certain file. And I think this is a very central question to, um, yeah, to the question of um, doing science and doing it openly because this way you can prove that you had, for example, an idea at a certain point in time. The project that I will present is not just my own project, but uh, a project from my research group. That's why I want to briefly show them. So some of them are also sitting here. So um, it's a joint project. So the service that I would like to present is called Origin Stamp. Um, I started this service in 2010, 2011. And the motivation for starting the service was that um, I had some student projects on our university web page. Back then I was a PhD student and I wanted to motivate like bachelor or master students to work on certain research projects. And then I found out that someone like copied these ideas and um, a company actually then made some money with that. So I was thinking how is it possible to prove that you had a certain idea for let's say, a, a master project, and how can you do that? And I mean, nowadays, I think it's very clear you use the blockchain for that. Um, back then, it wasn't that clear. What some people did was, I can skip that now, um, what some people did, of course, you could go to a notary agent or you could maybe tweet the idea, and this way you would have a timestamp from Twitter or Facebook or something like that, but it's not really convenient. So that's why we decided to develop this service. Another possibility, a bit old-fashioned, would be simply to uh, describe the idea you had and put it in an envelope and send it to yourself and don't open it. So you see, it's, it's a possibility, it works, but it's uh, not very convenient. So the service that I want to um, present, I will give a live demo. Yeah, I need Chrome. So. Okay, so if you want to try it yourself, um, you can also use your mobile phone. And um, what I'm doing now, just try it yourself. So you go on origin stamp. Oh. You open the web page, and it's completely free. So please um, open originstamp.org and not .com, because .com, that's the commercial page. But for research, we have this completely free web page. And when you open the web page, you can see here this option um, stamp here. Or you can actually also just install the, the mobile phone app. But I think it's easier if I demonstrate it now using the web page. So if you click there, you have the possibility to either upload a file that could be a photo, a PDF document, um, Word document, whatever. Or you can also just enter text here in a box. And I do a demonstration. If I type in here test. I mean, we heard that before that this hash function, yeah? So we um, the, the text I entered, it's really hard to read, yeah, but um, I entered test, and then you see that at the bottom we have this hash that corresponds to that text. And whenever I change the text here, you see that the hash changes. So if I say now stamp, I would actually see that I did that before at a, another conference in 2014, and you can see that this text has already been entered before. And the same is true, of course, if you upload a PowerPoint file or research data, maybe uh, some, some data you got from your microscope. So whenever you have any kind of data that you use for your research, you can just timestamp it in this way, prove um, that it already existed at a certain point in time. You can also click here on the certificate, then you have all the information you need to verify this timestamp. And as you can see, it's really easy to use. You basically just do drag and drop of the file. And the file is not transferred to our servers because the hashing is done within the browser. 
So even if it's something really confidential, we never get really access to it. Um, over the years, um, I mean, we offered now for yeah, even more than seven years. It has been used uh, nearly three million times now. And yeah, you can try it yourself. As I said, it's free. And you can also see here that every few seconds it's used somewhere in the world. Okay, then I go back to the slides. Are there any questions regarding the usage? Okay. Yeah. I was just wondering, like in the uh, context of how IPFS works or this I IPLD system, so if I made a very small change to my data, and uh, is there a way that I can link that analyze or change data uh, to this uh, original? It's it's not not possible, but I mean, of course, you could timestamp that as well. Mm. So that would be the only way. So we really, it's it's very simple actually. The way we do it, it's that we have we upload a digital file. Let's assume that you uploaded a video. Then we just, as I said, um, get the hash within the browser, and then we do a transaction within the Bitcoin network and Ethereum, so that we have a permanent record in the blockchain of this file and then it can easily be verified. And of course, since we offer this service for free and we don't want to bloat the blockchain, we don't do a transaction for every file that you want to hash, but we like um, gather all the um, hashes of a whole day and then every 24 hours we um, perform the transaction. We have also some extensions that you can use for your research projects, for example, um, Git. So if you want to, if you use a version control system, you can like timestamp all the um, source code development. Of course, you cannot just use Git for source code, but you could also use Git for when you write a publication for your LaTeX file or whatever. So you can really prove the state of your research on every single day. Or we have a plugin for WordPress, a JavaScript uh, plugin and um, also for backup solutions so that you can timestamp the state of your backups. And we have a free-to-use API that's linked there for non-commercial purposes. Here you find some information how it works, so it's all documented on the web page. And another possibility is that you can try our mobile phone app. It's uh, yeah, also very easy to use. Basically, you just take a photo and then the photo is timestamped, and you can even see on a map where it was taken. So I wait a second so that <laughs> the people can find it later. And of course, it cannot just be used for um, for science, but also many people use it to, for example, when they get a rental car, and they see, okay, there's some damage to the rental car, maybe there's some, some damage to the windscreen, then you can just take a photo, and if you return the rental car a week later, and the rental car company asks you to pay for the damage, you can simply say, no, that was pre-existing damage. And another possibility, for example, that I know people that used it when they moved into a flat, and there was some damage in the flat, and later when they moved out, the landlord asked them to pay for that, so that's another possibility. Um, let's see whether that works. Maybe you've seen that. I think it's also, uh, it's, it's a video that shows a new technology using machine learning and it allows you to, is it playing? Yeah, so you have the source sequence on the left and the um, artificial creation on the right. And I think that's also a nice application of trusted timestamping because we don't really know what is real and what is fake anymore, also in science. So let's think about the situation maybe in uh, 50 years. We want to know what President Obama said or President Trump said. And I mean, everyone can just create these very, very realistic fake videos. And of course, if you timestamp all this information, then it's kind of preserved also for in 20 or 50 years. And since more and more information is digital, it's 
gets always easier to fake this kind of information. Um, here we see another short sequence. So it looks really realistic. And I think in two years, maybe three years, we will not be able to distinguish a fake from reality anymore. And I think, as I said, also in this area, timestamping is really important. Then I would like to come to some other applications. Another way what you can use it for is, um, we all know these videos of Russian dash, dash cams. And in court, if you have a video of a crash, you cannot really use it because it's not, in, not a real evidence and it can be manipulated in the meantime. So we developed an app that is a dash cam but uses also this kind of trusted timestamping. And after an accident, of course, you, in a mobile phone you have sensors that can detect accidents, that they can detect um, the change in acceleration. And then the video is timestamped within seconds after the crash. And if later uh, you have uh, the court hearing, you can present video evidence that already existed only a few seconds after the crash. So you have the data from the airbag, for example, when it deployed, and you have the timestamp from the video, and this way you can prove that you didn't uh, change anything because you simply didn't have the time to take any manipulations. Um, this was also just cited from German's um, Supreme Court. Um, so it seems that, uh, yeah, the, the value of dash cam footage um, will change in the future. The way it works is very simple. I think I don't have to explain it here um, in this uh, audience. I would like to say a few words about the current users of this um, trusted timestamping service. Of course, researchers are like uh, really important to us. And I get maybe one phone call a week of a researcher that used it for for example, when they synthesize proteins or some other things and they have some questions. So they are, I would say, the, the biggest um, group of users, but also journalists use it, for example, in the war in Syria. I know that they have used it, but also for yeah, cases of insurance, patent lawyers, and yeah, so the possibilities for using trusted timestamping, I think they're really, uh, yeah, there's a lot of possibilities. Okay, um, that was my last slide. Do you have any questions? Just take mine. Uh, you said uh, geographical locations are also um, uh, stored as uh, me metadata, but is there a possibility also to Geo stamp, but then the whomever stamps it has its geographical coordinate uh, uh, assured, right? Uh, is, is it ever possible? Yeah. So of course, these um, geographic information that we include in the um, stamp can be easily manipulated because we rely on the sensor data of the mobile phone. It's more for yourself that you know, for example, if you were hiking and you saw something, you know, I was in these mountains three years ago and I had this idea. Then it's maybe difficult to find it, but you, if you know, okay, I had it when I was hiking in these mountains, it's very easy to find it, but it's, it can be easily manipulated. So it should not be considered as uh, evidence. I wanted to quiz you more on the granularity of your time measurements. So you say you're doing it once a day, but in Bitcoin, the best you could do is seven, eight, nine minutes. Um, that's fine for current science, maybe, but the IoT world of science, milliseconds. So there's the project from Google called Rough Time. I was just wondering if you're aware of that and what innovations you thought you could implement to give you that per second time st time stamping at scale. Okay, uh, I didn't know about that project. I'll look into that. 
Um, of course, it really depends on the use case. I think in the case of scientific ideas and scientific data, in most cases, this accuracy of one stamp, uh, time stamp a day is, is good enough. We also have this commercial service, originstamp.com. For example, um, yeah, I think I can, can say it, BISF is using it um, for time stamping like um, things when in their production. And then they need a higher accuracy. So we use at the moment Bitcoin and Ethereum, but if you want to have higher accuracy, of course, it would be better to use other blockchains as well that uh, allow of a higher resolution. I agree. Yeah. Oh, okay. sorry, sorry. <laughs> hey, um, I have a question that's a little bit related to the whole kind of mechanism of timestamping, right? Because if you have a data set and then you hash it, you get some kind of unique identifier. But if you want to prove, say, I write some code and I want to prove that it, I was the first person to do it, right? And then you change a very little thing, a uh, space, uh, B equals will become A equals, then the hash looks completely different. I wonder, are there any solutions uh, out there for uh, being able to prove like the similarity maybe of code or? I mean, what you would need is kind of um, fuzzy hashing. In theory, that would be possible, but I think the easiest solution is simply to, if you, for example, if you talk about writing code, that if you use something like uh, a, a version control system, that you simply um, timestamp every commit you do. And that's what we do with this plugin. So each time you commit your data, it's automatically timestamped. So you, you don't have to do anything manually, but it works completely automatic. Yeah, so I had a question regarding, um, I found it very interesting, the German Supreme Court uh, ruled on this um, dash cam recording using some of the research. Do you have any court cases um, that are in regards to research data being verified, because I'd be very interested in seeing if from a legal standpoint, if this time stamping was used to back up research or patents that resulted from research. Yeah, I, I don't know of, of research that uh, was discussed in, in, in court, but there are like uh, court cases where time stamping on the blockchain, I mean, we are not the only ones anymore, uh, several companies that do that, um, where it has been used in front of court uh, successfully. I can send you uh, some information about a uh, court case in China, for example. Okay. Yeah, I'd be interested. Okay, I think that, thank you very much, and it's for free. It's for free. Yeah, so this is like really cool. When you open the web page, yeah. go on the .org, yeah. not .com. Yeah, and, and <laughs> I, looked, I looked for it like early on, and we have the largest and most secure blockchain for science already set up, right? It's Bitcoin blockchain, right? <laughs> So what's the point of like having more blockchains, right? <laughs> For science, okay? Yeah, thank you very much, Bela. Okay, now I want to, yeah, good. Cool.